back with another video. Today I'm taking a look at the 2020 Intel MacBook Air versus the 2020 M1 MacBook Air. These laptops were released just over half a year apart and just to look at them you'd never really think that they were that different. Uh, they have the same form factor, the case is the same, the display is the same, Everything visually is identical for the most part, but inside under the hood, this is probably the biggest leap that I've seen performance wise in this short of a time span in a long time. Inside this, uh, I'm pretty sure it's this one, the Intel one is a 1.1 gigahertz quad core Core i5 CPU. It has Thunderbolt three ports on the side, whereas on this one, you've got an eight core CPU and an eight core GPU M1 with Thunderbolt 4. Those are gonna be the biggest differences. The webcam on the M1 is supposed to be just a hair better, uh, but it's still a terrible 720 webcam. So really, we're basically comparing red potatoes to gold potatoes there. Oh, and the last thing that's really noticeable here, the M1 is fanless, which is super nice to hear if you're a MacBook user, because if you own any kind of MacBooks previous to the M1, you're probably familiar with this sound. So I've been using the M1 for a while and I've used the 2020 Intel version a ton. Uh, the fan noise is something that I definitely notice, but where I really see the speed come through is when I'm doing things like software development builds, if I'm working on apps, and if I'm multitasking. Uh, the Intel Air can really have trouble multitasking outside apps that aren't Apple. Uh, I see this most with things like video calls, which I know have been really important to a lot of people lately. I've had the Intel MacBook basically lock up on me when I was trying to demo a product to a client, with the fans screaming away while I was on a video call. The M1 has never had any issues on that front, but it's always been really snappy with everything that I've been doing. I could be on video calls demoing stuff with Xcode builds running in the background and everything has been smooth as butter. Uh, I was initially a little bit worried about having a fanless computer and wondering if there would ever be any overheating issues, but that's never been a problem. And where the Intel MacBook has struggled at times plugged into my 4K doing different tasks, pretty much everything, uh, the M1 has been so much better in that regard. The final thing I'll talk about is the battery life. The M1 is also substantially better there as well. The Intel would suck back the battery as soon as you started working on anything that put any kind of load on the CPU. The M1 is just so much better. It lasts way longer. Pretty much whatever you're doing on here, you get a lot better battery life. Though it's easy for me to talk and gab on about this stuff and you might have a tough time visualizing it. So I set up a little benchmark test for you guys. Uh, I ran Cinebench multi-core tests on these machines until they both died. You'll see exactly how much longer the battery life is on the M1. But also just pay attention to just how fast the images are processing on the M1 versus the Air. All right, let's kick it off.
As you can see, the M1 was way more performant in its actual processing power and the battery life. Uh, the Intel dropped out at around two hours and 16 minutes, while the M1 lasted basically another hour dying at around three minutes and not three minutes. That would be a really, really short battery life. Three hours and 10 minutes. Keep in mind the battery draining that fast isn't something that's going to happen under pretty much any circumstances. This was with screen savers turned off, displays cranked up to 100% brightness, and Cinebench is putting an enormous load on each laptop that isn't something that you're likely ever going to do. I'm able to use the M1 all day without having to charge it as a software developer, so if you're using it for similar tasks, you could probably expect the same thing. With all that being said, the only real advantage I would say that the Intel has is compatibility because the M1 is an ARM-based chip. Uh, there are some apps, most things like command line tools and build tools that have had trouble working with the M1, but those are pretty infrequent. And a lot of those issues from what I can tell are mostly worked out now. Uh, I've only had one or two things that I've had to find workarounds for. Most things are completely fine. And honestly, the gains that you get in performance and battery life far outweigh any of the minor issues that you're gonna have with this. Basically, that is it. If you guys have any questions about the M1, let me know. Uh, I'd like to do a review on this, but I still wanna try out a few things with it to make sure that I'm giving you the best review that I can. So stay tuned for that. Uh, there are other tech reviews and videos coming down the pipe. So keep your eyes peeled for those. I hope everyone enjoyed this video. If you want to help me out on this channel, please hit that like button. If you want to help me out even more, please subscribe. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.